Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Average Uploader and today I'm bringing you yet another Photoshop tutorial. Today is going to be the paint bucket fill tool, whatever you want to call it. Paint bucket tool, there you go. Uh, and the blurs, sharpen and smudge tool. Okay, so just a little simple section. Uh, they are generally quite easy. You'll notice that in my tutorials, uh, in the order I've done things, I've went over the selection tools basically, I did the crop tool a bit later, did the brush tool, did the eraser, we've skipped a couple of these because they're more advanced but I will go over them later and next up we have the text tool, we've done the shape tool and yeah so I wanted to do things in a logical order as I said in the first video but without further ado here is the fill tool. So as you can imagine it functions like the fill tool from paint, uh, surprisingly. If you go to the bottom left and select a color in which you would like to fill, so I'm going to choose orange here, and then just click in the space, it will fill it with a color. Uh, similarly, if I'm just going to change the color here so we can distinguish between them, if I go to here, I can change the color of these. And yeah, that's, that's basically the fill tool. It's uh, not very complicated at all. Of course, as uh, Photoshop does its thing. There are lots of settings that you can fiddle around with. Uh, most notably tolerance as we went over in the selection tool for the magic wand and quick selection tool. This just means that if for example my white background before, if I just undo all of this, if my white background wasn't entirely white, if it had some uh, grey tinges in some areas, if my tolerance was up quite a lot it would still fill it. And uh, you know what? I can probably give you a quick example of this. Okay, so we're back with an example here. As you can see, this these lines are black and this kind of bottom section is grey. And uh, because the tolerance is up all the way, it will see the black as a part of the grey. And when I fill, it will fill all of this. Now it's important to know that if you have a completely clean white here, it will actually realize that that is completely clean, you know, and white. Uh, so, if I fill the white with a slightly darker grey here, and then change to orange, and then try and fill this, it will fill the whole image, because the tolerance is up all of the way, so it sees less, you know, it, uh, the, it's, it's distinguishing that black of all shades is the same colour, because its tolerance is very, very high, and you'll see if I change the tolerance down, the, uh, the colours that are slightly similar still fade together, but the ones that are very, very harsh black do not. So the next thing we're going to look at is the blur tool over here, and uh, it's the first in the three different tools that you can select from this little box. I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see the effects properly, but as you can imagine, it blurs things. So if I just uh, rub, hold and rub over this, you'll see that the edges start to uh, blur a bit. Now this is more useful if you're trying to, uh, I don't know, merge one picture with another, for example, you know, photo photoshopping a horse on your friend's face and some of the edges look a bit too sharp, you can uh, use this to kind of blur them and kind of make them meld together. In a later tutorial, I will look at filter effects and there are some more comprehensive lists of blurs that are available that are automatic, but for now, this is just a kind of very very gradual very uh, controlled way of blurring certain areas of your image and just like we know from the brush tool when you right click it has the same similar features to a brush and you can just change the hardness you can make it blur more harshly in some areas and if we zoom out now you'll see that this little area here is more blurred as opposed to this in fact if I uh, undo all of that you can see the difference can't you flashing on and off so, that was the Blur tool. The next is the Sharpen tool, which does, as you'd expect, the opposite of the Blur tool. Now, it's making some really, really funky colours here, and that's because it does not work well on areas that, uh, well, on areas that have faded gradually out. But if you wanted to sharpen up an area on any picture, you can just do that. It doesn't work quite well with this because I've used uh, some very, very square, already sharp shapes. However, if I were to get a picture up here, a very uh, blurry picture, I could then try and sharpen it in some areas along the edges. You can see there, though, actually, just a little bit. Uh, it's very hard to tell, but uh, as I run the sharpen tool down here, it, uh, it just makes the distinguish between the, um, the gray and the black here a bit more sharp, if you know what I mean. You'll see there it's made a white kind of border, which makes it sharper and stand out more. I think it'll be quite hard to see. Yeah, very hard to see. But 
that is the sharpen tool. The next one, and possibly my favourite, although most useless, is the smudge tool, which again works like the paintbrush tool, all of these do. Um, I'm just going to change the size up a bit here. And what the smudge tool... Oh, sorry about that. What the smudge tool does is it smudges things. And uh, you'll see there, it's very, 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 very weird. Um, it just takes the colour that it has right here and it smudges it, so let's make it a bit less. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put the strength down a bit so it's not as harsh. You see there, it uh, doesn't actually smudge all the way out like a line anymore, but yeah, it, it smudges things in. The kind of example you'd uh, you'd know about from the use of a smudge tool is uh, people trying to make their abdominal muscles seem larger on certain pictures of themselves minus the top or t-shirt. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the smudge tool. You can um, kind of curve things in with it. Uh, it's not, not entirely useless. None of the tools in Photoshop are entirely useless. I just haven't found myself needing to use it that often. So yeah, that was the paint bucket tool, the smudge tool, and the blur tool and sharpen tool. So stick with me next time when I'm going to go over the text tool. Ciao.